Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking Gear, making a video that is an absolute necessity. I'm making this out of pure frustration. Uh, the amount of times I've gone out and shot with people that needed to sight in a rifle, even avid shooters, and they just kept chasing their tails and used way more ammo than they needed to. What I'm saying is not enough people know how to effectively get a good zero on their gun. So whether you've been shooting for a little while or you have zero idea, we're gonna go from the very basics, how to get a good zero on your rifle, whether it be a bolt action or semi-auto, a hunting rifle or a long range recreational rifle. Um, we need to get a solid zero. I'm gonna tell you guys how to do that. I'm gonna tell you guys how to do it effectively so we're able to get a decent zero, hopefully within two shots, uh, as well as explain some of the features on scopes like setting the zero, what's the point of that, as well as the zero stop if your scope has it. If none of that makes sense to you, stick around and hopefully very soon it will. So back to the point on why I'm making this video, too much personal experience, whether of my own mistakes from years back when I got into this or just too many people I go out and shoot with end up just chasing their tail. Like I said, they just keep clicking until it feels right and they're just all over the place. Sometimes they're not even on the target initially at all. The way we avoid that is by going to step one. So let's just go ahead and get into it. What I recommend doing, it's not an absolute necessity, I got away without doing it, but I would recommend to bore sight your gun. If you guys don't know what that means, to bore sight your rifle is to pretty much adjust the scope without shooting it initially. You just look down the bore or the barrel of your rifle um, and line up the center of the reticle with the center of the barrel as best you can. Now you don't need to do this at your shooting distance, let's say 100 yards or whatever, not necessary. You just need to get a good reference. Chances are, right when you mount up your scope, it could be way off. So off that it won't even be on target, whether that be steel or paper, when you start shooting at 100 yards. So, we should bore sight it. Good news is you could bore sight it at the range if you so wish, or you could do it in the comfort of your own house. You could go ahead and set it on something nice and stable, and just aim out the window. Try to pick a nice little aim point, whether that be a weird looking leaf on a tree that can stand out to you while looking through the barrel, weird bark on the center of a tree stump, whatever. Pick something that stands out, find it in the center of the barrel first, and then look up on your scope and start adjusting windage and elevation until it starts getting pretty darn centered up. Now the way the bore sighting process is done is different for every gun, but for the most part, it's pretty similar. Bolt actions are a bit easier in that whether it's a Tika, Bergara, Remington 700, or the 2020 Waypoint, you go ahead and just remove the bolt uh, and then, of course, this will depend on the stock or the chassis the gun's in. It may be prohibiting you from looking down the barrel. Some guns have folding stocks. So you can fold it off to the side, do whatever you need to do to be able to look down the barrel. Um, for AR-10s, for example, you're going to have to go ahead and field strip it down a little bit, uh, remove the lower, then remove the bolt carrier group and charging handle, and then place the back end of it on like whatever works for you, whether it's a shooting bag, a stack of books, whatever. Just make sure you're able to look down that barrel and have it on a very stable platform. And again, start with the barrel. What I mean by that is aim with the barrel first. Keep moving it around until you find something very definitive and easy to recognize. Again, whether that'd be like weird bark on a tree. Um, just aim with the barrel first and that's hopefully gonna stay still as you start moving the reticle. Okay, so that's bore sighting. Not necessary, but could very easily save you a few rounds when you get to the range. Now moving on to step two, this is where actual shooting is gonna be done at the range. Speaking of the range, uh, common practice is about 100 yards. Truthfully, it won't matter once you plug it into the ballistic calculator, when you're telling the ballistic calculator the grain weight and the caliber or whatever else, it'll ask you your zero range, but universally, we just like to sight in and group and just prove guns at 100 yards. So nice and easy to remember. Of course, if you're talking about like a Trijicon ACOG or other optics, those might be in meters at certain ranges or M1A iron sights, I think might be zeroed at 200 meters. So go off the instruction manual. Otherwise, a good old rifle scope, we could just go ahead and call it 100 yards, easy to remember. A little advice, no matter how confident you are in your bore sight, or maybe you didn't bore sight it at all, what I'd recommend is a little insurance, and that is just have a larger paper target or cardboard, whatever it is that you're gonna see a hole in that target to get reference off of. The larger that is, the more insurance you have to measure off of. Go ahead, find the bullseye, the center of your aim point, whatever it is, and take a shot. Hopefully, we're on paper and we got something to measure off of. Now, there's three different ways to do this. The first one being more time consuming, but also most accurate. The second being pretty close, you just need a certain kind of reticle. And the third's pretty lazy and pretty quick. So you guys can just kind of pick and choose which works best for you. Or maybe you could use a little bit of each one, just depending on your situation. So let's go ahead and start off with method number one, the most time consuming, but also very, very accurate. That first method being, after you take your first shot, you walk down range and measure out just how far off you are. 
Again, maybe more applicable for others. If you're at a shooting range and you can't walk down, then maybe not an option. But I'll give you this example anyway, and you could use it if you so wish. Let's go ahead and use this for example, and be sure to get a close up later. Let's say this green dot is your aim point. That's your bullseye, that is where you're aiming. The red X marks where you actually hit. What you could do is go ahead and literally measure that out and start with one of the planes. Let's go with the vertical plane first. This would show me that I am about two inches low. How to correct from that is depending on your scope, whether it's an MOA scope or minute of angle or mils or mil radian. Also the values, maybe you have a mil scope that adjusts in uh, tenths, 0.1 mil, maybe it's 0.2 mil. Maybe you have an MOA scope, a quarter uh, MOA, which is most common, 0.25 MOA or 0.5 MOA. You need to know that because I'll go ahead and give you the examples right now. So we're two inches low. What you need to do is dependent on the scope itself. What I'm about to say might sound uh, complicated because it sounds like math. This is from someone who doesn't like math, barely got out of high school. So I promise it's not complicated. What I'm about to say, you don't even necessarily have to remember. I happen to. So let's go ahead and talk about this scope in particular. This is a mil scope and I adjust in 10th increments, 10th mils. So in this case, since I'm two inches low, I know that one click at 100 yards is 0.36 inch. So the equation you guys can use here is blank, the number of inches you need to adjust, divided by 0.36. Again, that's for a mil scope with 10th mil increments. If you have 0.2, then that's 0.72. Again, a lot of numbers, you don't have to remember it. Just know this is what to do. For you MOA guys out there, let's say you're working with a quarter MOA increment scope. That would be, once again, blank, the number of inches you need to adjust, divided by 0.25, and that will give you roughly the amount of clicks. You might have to round up or round down. And again, you don't necessarily have to remember the fact that with MOA scopes with quarter increments, 100 yards, each click is about a quarter inch. That's why it's 0.25. And with the mil scope, it's about 0.36. Again, not really something you need to have in your head when you start going out to long range or whatever. Just something to remember if you wanna do it this method here. It's very accurate to walk down range and know that's two inches to adjust. And then on the horizontal plane, it's about three inches to adjust. So once again, three inches divided by 0.25 equals the amount of clicks on a MOA scope with quarter clicks or it's three inches divided by 0.36. That'll give us the amount of clicks to do on a mil scope with 10th clicks. The second method may be more popular because you don't have to leave your shooting location because you're gonna be using the reticle to measure instead. Of course, that being said, you have to have a pretty informative reticle um, instead of just a duplex. Again, that's just a horizontal and vertical line. Not a whole lot of information going on there. That may be what you guys are familiar with with hunting uh, optics out there. Um, in any case, you can try to ballpark it. Otherwise, if you have an informative reticle, let's say one of those Christmas tree reticles, uh, just a lot of information with mills or MOA holdovers for both windage and elevation, what you could do is in that same situation, again, being that we were aiming here and missed here, I'll go ahead and actually put like a reticle on screen to give you guys a better perspective. Let's say we have a very informative reticle and it shows us that in this first example, we were about, oh, I don't know, let's say 3.1 mils to the right and 2.3 mils low. Again, we could have walked up to it and measured it, but instead we have this reticle that in itself will help us measure it out. So now that's a little bit more easy. We could just go ahead and adjust based off what the reticle is telling us um, and then just adjust from there, knowing again the increments, whether it's quarter MOA or 10th mils. This is a very, very effective way to zero, again, because you don't have to leave your shooting location. Uh, but of course, it would depend on not only the reticle, hopefully it's pretty informative, as well as you would hope that you're able to see the bullet hole from where you're at. Sometimes you don't, maybe you're shooting a smaller caliber, maybe your scope's not of high magnification. And so that's the only drawback and the benefit of walking down range and actually measuring it for yourself. But in most cases, using the reticle to measure out and make corrections is the most effective way. The third method, like I said, very quick, but definitely not as accurate. So use it at your discretion as well. That would be to hold the rifle again with the reticle where you were aiming and then hold it as still as you can and adjust the scope until the center of the reticle goes to where the impact actually was. The chances of that working out very accurately, pretty slim because chances are you're gonna be moving that gun, but that's definitely a very quick guide to get at least even closer. This is more effective when you're not even on paper, but you saw splash in the dirt way high right. Seeing splash in dirt is gonna be hard to get an accurate reading off of that, but you see the general location. So let's say you were off paper, you're way off into the 
dirt. You can go ahead and try to hold the gun as steady as possible, move the reticle to be where that dirt is, and hopefully you're on paper on the second shot. And from that point, I'd start getting a little bit more precise with the uh, measurements. Whether you go with method one, two, or three, a very, very important point to make. It's very simple, and it's not, of course, if you overthink it. Make sure you dial the right way. How do you know you're gonna dial the right way? If we overthink it, we tell ourselves we're not changing anything to the gun, we're only moving the reticle. So maybe we're telling the reticle to go left. Although that's what you're doing, don't think of it that way because you're gonna be working in reverse. Rather just tell yourself where you wanna move the bullet. If you are too high and you need to bring it down, dial down. If you're too far to the left, you need to bring the bullet right, dial right. Pretend you're telling the bullet where to go. Although it's backwards, you're actually moving the reticle the opposite way of what you're dialing. Disregard that, tell the bullet where to go. Again, if you're too low, the bullet needs to come up, dial up. So those are the methods one, two, and three on how to zero. And again, you just repeat it until you're pretty close to where you're aiming. You may be a little off, maybe you didn't get a good measurement. So keep doing this. Hopefully within two or three shots, you're pretty happy. Then it's up to you to verify as much as you want. Maybe do a three round group, maybe do a five round group. Whatever group size you do, find the center of those three or five and count that as what to do your final measurement on. And hopefully with that, you're pretty happy. So hopefully by this point, you have a gun that is shooting right on the money, right where you want it. So you're sighted in. However, the turrets don't reflect a zero because it's on some random numbers at this point. So some people out there that are new to shooting just think, who cares what the numbers say, the gun sighted in, so fantastic. But we're gonna go ahead and talk about the benefits of actually getting those turrets to read zero on both windage and elevation. The first one being, you just have the reference. Even if you got a hunting rifle, you may wanna go ahead and set the zero on that if it's a feature on the scope, just because you could always go back and refer. Maybe it moved, maybe it got bumped around, whatever the case is, even if they're capped, I would go ahead and set that zero. Uh, the second reason may be more obvious to the long range shooters who are going to be dialing. You're going to be dialing, obviously, for those longer extended shots, and you've got to know when to bring it down to that 100 yard zero again, and that's obviously an easy number to remember, zero. So those are the obvious benefits on setting the zero and not just leaving it on random numbers. Uh, then, not all scopes have this feature, but I would say the vast majority of them nowadays do. Set your zero stop. What the zero stop's gonna do is stop on the 100 yard zero, and that's good because it prevents you from over-rotating to the wrong zero. What I mean by the wrong zero is, let's say the gun is sighted in and zeroed, so it's reading zero for elevation and windage, and we start shooting long range, we dial, and we make a full revolution to now we're on zero again. And now we're shooting way out there to where we even dial another revolution. Now we've made two revolutions, so we've seen our zero two different times. When we're done shooting, and we wanna bring it back to the 100 yard zero, how do we know what zero was the 100 yard zero? With the zero stop, you can just keep dialing down until it hits a hard wall right on that zero, and you're all good. Some scopes have a little bit of over travel by like five clicks, sometimes three, just for a little of insurance. But the point being, it's not gonna over rotate to the wrong zero. So that's why zero stops are nice. Now, the way that you set your zero and your zero stop, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to gloss over this just because it's different with every scope. The good news is whatever scope you have, I guarantee you there is a video out there to talk about how to set the zero and the zero stop if it has it. A video out there dedicated to your scope. To give you the quick rundown for the most part, scopes have three uh, Allen screws or maybe two. So you just go ahead and loosen, not take them all the way out. And by just loosening those, the whole turret can start rotating freely without clicking and readjusting the scope. Uh, and that is when you can index it back to a zero. Um, and again, some scopes aren't that way. The Razor series from Vortex, you actually start off with just loosening the sides and then dialing. So again, I don't need to go too nitty gritty with that. I would just recommend that you go on YouTube and see how to actually set the zero on your particular scope. Uh, maybe even see that before you even go shooting just to make sure it's something that you're gonna do in the right order. So I hope this video was informative enough. Of course, with anything, even a zero stop, for example, we could have made a 10 minute video on that topic alone. But hopefully I at least kind of gave you a little bit of insight on it and you guys stopped shooting through two boxes of ammo just to get a 100 yard zero. Hopefully you guys are able to get a pretty good zero within three and just three more after that are just a confirmation grouping. That's my goal. Now, the more you do this, the more effective you'll get. Certainly, I remember I used to just chase my tail all day long, just trying to get 100 yard zero and run through way too much ammo. And I'm glad to say at this point, I've got much better at bore sighting to where I'm never off by more than five inches uh, on uh, my paper targets. And then one correction from there, and I could pretty much say I got a two shot zero and then with some confirmation shots just to confirm. Um, but yeah, so. The goal with this video, hopefully it kind of just gave you guys information you didn't already have or show you how to just zero without wasting all that much ammo, okay? Uh, I'd rather you guys use that for hunting or just hitting some steel at some long range. Don't play around at 100 yards. That's no fun. 
Anyway, guys, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, send it to a friend who doesn't know how to zero their rifle so you could save them some money as well. That does it. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.